Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022, and we have a very active pattern out there to start the month of November. We have Lisa, a hurricane, Martin, also a hurricane, and then this other area that could develop over the coming days and become a pretty big problem, not because that it might be a hurricane or something particularly intense, but the fact that it's going to be fairly long duration and it could be, uh, could be an impact for a pretty large area of coastline. I'll show you that. A lot to go over here this afternoon. Good to have you along with me. Let's start off at the National Hurricane Center site because I want to show you this. This is important. Lisa, hurricane force winds extend out 15 miles from the center, so it's not particularly large. And fortunately, the winds are only 80 miles per hour. I don't want to downplay it, but that certainly is better than a Category 2 or 3. I said yesterday, prepare for a Category 2. Hey, at least if you were prepared, you were ready. Some of the intensity guidance, especially the h wharf, it was indicating a rather intense system, like I think it was in the 960s, and it was off a little bit. And that's a good thing. I mean, we want our models to be dependable, yes, but you don't necessarily want them to be right when they show something really, really intense headed your way. It's kind of a, a weird situation. I understand that. But nevertheless, it's a Category 1. Hurricane force winds extend out 15 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds 70 miles from the center or 110 kilometers. And basically that means it has a fairly small wind field. The tropical storm force winds are something like this, and the hurricane force winds extend out something like that. That's roughly uh, 15 miles from the center and 70 miles from the center respectively. So it's not enormous, but it still will pack a pretty good punch there as it heads in pretty close to Belize City. We can zoom in and I can show you that close on our interactive map here. Now crossing the reef area, there's Belize City. You're going to have that onshore flow and that fairly small core. Things are going to pick up really quick. You guys are no strangers to hurricanes in Belize, especially these last 20 years or so. Um, but nevertheless, you need to take this seriously. Uh, it is going to come in before dark. That's a good thing. That helps a little bit. Uh, and then it's going to move inland and then eventually perhaps pop out in the Bay of Campeche over here. Stronger upper level winds and drier air should prevent it from regenerating. But all through this area, even after landfall, will be the potential to, of seeing a lot of heavy rain as well. Remember, these don't stop when they reach the coastline. It is not over. And so once this makes landfall, yes, Guatemala, interior portions of Belize, and then parts of southeastern Mexico itself, the Yucatan, Campeche, Tabasco regions. Yeah, you could have some very heavy rain come out of this system. All right, looking at the satellite, there's uh, Lisa. Not particularly well organized overall. Again, not wanting to downplay or take away the fact that it is a hurricane, but we certainly have seen better organized systems with a more clear eye. And no one's complaining. That's a good thing that it's not that strong or well organized. Uh, especially what the H wharf was showing. I was pretty worried last night, to be honest with you. It was really ramping it up. Just something wasn't there. And as I said, that's a good thing. Now look up here. There's Martin. Uh, got a nice eye associated with that. This will affect shipping lanes. This is going to grow into an enormous wind field up here over the North Atlantic. And any shipping traffic up there will be heavily impacted as Martin moves off into the North Atlantic even farther. So here is uh, Lisa. Again, just impinging into the reef system out here. There's Belize City right there. Your tropical storm force winds are about like this. Hurricane force winds about like that. A large overall circulation with it uh, of heavy rain even reaching up to Cancun and Cozumel. All of this is energy. It's rain. It's weather. And that whole thing is going to move across this part of Central America. And as I said, it doesn't stop. And you guys know this. I'm just reminding you. It's not over once it reaches the coast there. So these next few hours will be interesting. Any social media out there, I've had a lot of people reach out to me on uh, especially YouTube and Twitter that you're watching from Belize. If you're down in that area, let me know. Certainly put it in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter at Hurricane Track and uh, let me know how you're faring down there if you can do so safely. And again, at least this is, quote, only a low-end hurricane, all things considered, We'll take the, the better of the good news there, uh, considering what it could have been. Radar animation here, courtesy of Belize down here, out of the airport. And this particular animation 
is set up by Brian McNoldy. He does these long um, animations. I'll put the link to this, by the way, in the description of today's video. But there's the center coming in. Again, just starting to cross the outer reef area. There's Belize City and the core almost there, just a few hours away. And um, it'll ramp up pretty quick. And uh, then things will be nice by later tonight. It's moving fast enough that, yeah, by later tonight, you'll see a nice moon in the sky. And, um, you know, power will probably be out for the area. It could be a beautiful evening. Uh, and it won't be too severe overall. Uh, compared to certainly what it could have been. Again, that balance there. Not want to downplay it, but don't want to overdo it either. I think we got really lucky here considering what the Caribbean Sea has been known to produce. Check this out. Here's Martin, bona fide hurricane sitting up here. Yes, it's over cooler than optimal water temperatures, but again, it's that upper level uh, cold pocket that's got to be up here, allowing the instability to be much more pronounced and just a real quick meteorological lesson for you. you got to have cold air over warm air so that the warm air can be buoyant and go into that cold air. Basic instability. When it's just warm throughout the column of the atmosphere, chasers know this on the plains, and you see it written a lot in the outlooks for tornadoes especially, or severe threats as a whole, that the atmosphere is capped. That means you have warm over warm in a very simplistic way here to explain it. When you have much colder air aloft over, and this is important, especially warm, moist air, and the water temperatures up this way are warm enough to get you that moist, warm air, even though it might not be 80 degrees at the surface on the ocean, it's warm enough. You have enough latent heat down there. It's a little bit colder than average above. Bam, you have the mechanism to create deep thunderstorms that have wrapped around that center. That is a bona fide hurricane, even at this very high latitude here, almost breaking the record for the farthest north developing hurricane in the month of November. Didn't quite do it, but you know, who's keeping up with that, right? But for historical purposes, I think this is number two. All right, I want to talk about, uh, I mean, we pretty much know what's going to happen with Lisa. It'll make landfall in the next few hours, and then it's going to cross. Um, you know, the Yucatan and southeastern Mexico. But I want to point out this system here. That's Martin. And watch how large this is going to get. This is the GFS here. And just watch over the next couple of days. It really grows. Those yellows, greens, and dark oranges, reds, almost that black, and then the purple color. Holy cow, that's going to be a monster. Beast of a storm way up there in the North Atlantic monster waves with it and this really does impact commerce with these ships that come across the Atlantic yes these can be very very impactful people say oh it's just a fish storm well last time I checked with the exception of sailing fish and I've seen those they breach the water and they sail through the air for a period of time the rest of the ocean and remember whales are not fish so those don't count either um, fish live under the ocean, so it's a misnomer all around. It really is. There's no such thing as a fish storm unless we're having hurricanes under the ocean in some kind of a weird Stranger Things upside down type world, right? But seriously, that 941 pressure and the enormity of that wind field, man, the shipping interest up there, uh, you know, the container ships, anybody, I don't know how far out the sword boats go. Remember that movie, The Perfect Storm? I think I've got that book behind me um, from Sebastian Younger. But yes, these do impact more than just fish and whales and whatever else is out there. Very seriously, uh, you know, such an enormous storm. Then, watch what happens here. This is 36 hours out. Let's switch over to the Western Atlantic extent real quick. And uh, yes, there's Lisa right there. Nice high pressure sitting over the southeast. There's Martin. Now watch what happens. Martin exits stage right, so to speak. Uh, maybe it's stage right. I don't know. The right side of the frame, anyway. And so we move out into time. Look what happens here. 48 hours, not much. And then 72 hours, we're just starting to see the beginnings, three days out, of all of this energy out here starting to coalesce and come together and try to develop into something. What is it going to do? There's a lot of energy there. Now, the GFS, right at face value, tries to make kind of a small tropical cyclone out of it. Another piece of vorticity up here. 
Don't know if that's going to happen or not. We're going to have to just wait and see. But this tells me that's a lot of energy, a lot of heat, a lot of moisture. Uh, the flood risk down here to Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, again, could be high. Uh, this is really going to be an impactful system. And, you know, whether or not it's a named entity, well, that doesn't matter. Names are just what we give them to keep up with stuff better. Uh, the impacts could be very substantial. That's, that's day five, finally day six, and then here at day seven, look at that, just a massive gyre, just a huge area of low pressure, different pieces of energy rotating around it. I don't really know exactly how this is going to end up, but I do want to show you this on the wind field. All right, just like I showed you here, that big old ocean storm, watch what happens as we move this out into time. All of those greens that you start to sh start to see show up there, especially near days between uh, days six and seven. All of this right here, this is 10 meters above the ocean. Okay, 10 meters. That's it. It's only 10 meters up. Uh, so that's about 33 feet or so. Thousand millibar pressure at the surface. That's northeast winds blowing over hundreds of miles of water. We call that the fetch. And anything green and up, so to speak, is 34 knots, or tropical storm intensity, and higher. Blowing for, let's just back this up, when do we start to see those greens pop up? At uh, hour 138, and this is what, every six hours? So, dogs barking, they don't like it. So, going out into time, that's a couple of days there of strong wind just blowing across the coast there, on top of, and this is very important, Full moon coming up. I think it's around the 8th. We have the king tide, so it's a little extra high this time of year anyway. So the Outer Banks of North Carolina, Charleston, they're especially flood prone. Wilmington, right where I live, we get this sort of sunny day flooding all the way down to the northeast coast of Florida, we'll say from Canaveral, and maybe even south of there, we'll have to wait and see, but certainly from Canaveral, North Flagler, uh, Daytona up to Jacksonville and those beaches, um, yes, we could be looking at a long duration, meaning that it's more than just an afternoon, maybe a couple of days of very stiff onshore flow piling up the water. And the other thing going against us, look at that, that concave shape to the coastline catches it like a, a mitt, right? We know this, but again, you know, every one of these is different. And sometimes we forget. And you say, well, it's not a real big deal, a thousand three millibars, come on. But just more than that, look at those greens in there. That's your tropical storm force wind blowing over a long area. I just talked about tropical storm force winds extend 70 miles out from the center of Lisa. This is hundreds of miles of tropical storm force winds blowing that water, the Atlantic, towards the coast. So that's something we have to pay very close attention to over the coming days. All right. Finally. Water temperatures, just in case we're wondering, yes, they are warm enough all throughout this area that if something were to concentrate and focus that energy better, it's absolutely possible that we could get a more subtropical to tropical. Tropical is more concentrated, subtropical more spread out. Yeah, this could get a name. Not that it matters, but I think people pay attention to that more. I understand it, and it is possible that we could get another name storm out of this. And then the GFS is hinting in the very long range that we could get something out here as well, out towards the 10 to 12 day mark in the future. So November, starting out active, could stay active as this pattern allows for more development even after we're done with Lisa and Martin. All right, there you go. That's what I got for you. Let me get this online. You all down there in Belize, hang in there. Again, please hit me up on uh, YouTube in the comments and on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. Would love to know what's happening down your way. I appreciate hearing from you all and that you have appreciated me putting these videos together to outline what's happening for you in Belize. All right, hang in there. It'll be uh, getting better. As I said, later tonight, the moon will be out. Might even see a lot of stars if the power gets knocked out down there in Belize City and vicinity. All right, have a good rest of your Wednesday afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Sutherth for Hurricane Track. Of course, I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.